everybody, welcome to another episode of Buyer Bus. We're out here at Dealers Auto Auction of the Rockies, about to look at like three, four, five hundred cars. And what are we trying to find in today's episode? So today we are looking at guilty pleasures. These are cars that we might be just a little bit ashamed that we actually enjoy. All right, let's go for it. Let's do it. Brendan, this is one of my all-time biggest guilty pleasures. I present to you the Chrysler PT Cruiser, which is already a bad choice. Convertible, which is even weirder. This one, though, is the Chrysler PT Cruiser 2.4 liter turbo. Oh, boy. Oh, yes. <laughs> I don't know, Tommy. This is going to be a tough one to win me over on because, you know, I, I mean, me and my friends in high school, you know, I'm not super proud of this, but we did call this the PT Loser. Yes, of course, everybody then. did. Did you yeah. know when the PT Cruiser launched, though, there were waiting lines. I mean, the, the excitement around this car was enormous. People loved these. They were so excited about this retro design that dates back to like the hot rods from like the 30s and the 40s. Chrysler had such a big hit on their hands. And then they ended up at every Hertz rental car fleet in the entire world. And then they got the reputation of, you know, it's not really that special of a car. And then Chrysler was like, you know what we're going to do to spice it up? We're going to make it a convertible. So they chopped the roof off. They gave it this roll bar. And then they weren't done because they gave it what's under the hood. You want to pop it? Yeah. Now, of course, um, this is the, just the coolest thing between the, the tribal graphics, the bright blue, and this engine. What we're going to look at here is a 2.4 liter four cylinder turbocharged engine with a whopping, hold on to your breath here, 220 horsepower. Wasn't this the actual, the same engine that they put in the Neon SRT4, Tommy? It's pretty similar. Yep, 220 horsepower, zero to 60 and right around seven, 7.2 seconds back in the day. And you can get this with a manual transmission. This one's the auto, so it's not quite as special. But dude, like how can you not like this car? Give me one reason you don't like this car. Oh, it's, I wouldn't want to be seen driving around in it. <laughs> I'd say it's probably the number one reason, Wait. especially with the top down. You <laughs> haven't seen the, in, look at this inside, Brendan. I mean, they got, they got, they just nailed it. You got the blue dash, right? You, they brought the exterior into the inside. You got this eight ball style shifter here. You got the center mounted window switches, the white inset gauges, this retro looking steering wheel. I, I just, I'll just, they're just the best cars. The okay, best cars? They're not cars? the best cars. <laughs> they're, they're just the craziest thing. It kind of looks like with the interior, they were copying uh, like that new beetle a little, little bit, right? By yeah. going with the body colored uh, panels on the inside. So it, I, the inside does look kind of cool. I'll give them that. And wait till you see what it drives like. All right. So first of all, I want to show you the house music door chime. Mm, Why is it so fast? Interesting. I don't know. It's very rhythmic. <laughs> Cole <laughs> listens to this music for fun. The PT Cruiser plays it automatically. Yeah. There, there you, you go. go. All right, let's start this baby up. I do like the white gauges. Oh, that doesn't sound super healthy. <laughs> it beeped at you. It's like, what are you doing to me? <laughs> All right, well, let's, let's take the PT Cruiser for a drive. Now, dynamically, this car is not known for being a handling machine. No. Because it is, it is a, essentially a neon underneath, right? Right. Well, I mean, the Neon SRT4 was considered a pretty good handling machine, wasn't yeah, but it? but this was never up to that standard. So this is basically the, the engine from the SRT4, but not the, uh, not the, not the rest of it. And we were hitting these little bumps, and the amount of cowl, sh they feel like how jiggly it is, just on these little <laughs> tiny bumps. Like, you would not want to drive this car fast on any kind of mountain road, you know what I mean? No, and that, I mean, that's pretty common if you think about it. Cars that aren't meant to have... A, it, Sorry, cars that you aren't supposed to have a convertible version of from the get-go, when you take the roof off, you get rid of a lot of that structural rigidity. Yes, this is not going to be a, yeah, this is not a canyon carver, but no. I just think that this is so symbolic of what, what America was doing in the early 2000s. How could you not love it? Yeah. All right, should we do an acceleration? Let's see. You better hold on. Is this turbo gonna kick in? What, what RPMs do you think this turbo is gonna kick in at? Uh, every RPM. Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> Let's do it. Oh, it's a little broken. <laughs> it's not It's not really accelerating. Oh my gosh. There, there it goes. <laughs> oh boy. And the GoPro fell off. <laughs> okay. This has not gone well. <laughs> oh, it's a little stinky too, Tommy. Even the GoPro doesn't want to be a part of this. <laughs> it's just like, no. 
<laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Come on, Turbo. Okay, so it only <laughs> it only works up to half throttle, basically. I feel like we need to give that another go, just in case you can get it up to that full throttle. It didn't, look, it's not here. We'll point it down this road here. Are you okay. ready? I just I think something's wrong with the. Oh, there we go. Yeah, right. let's give it another go. We got to give it another go. So it turns out the PT, it's a gentle beast. You can't simply just mash the throttle. No, you have it, to, it needs to warm up a little bit, I guess. Yeah, you have to kind of coax it into life. The other question I have is, with these center mounted window switches, does that mean you can drive with the doors off? Like um, a Jeep? <laughs> yeah, that's what they're there for. <laughs> You're one hacksaw away from driving with the doors off. Yeah. All right. Oh, didn't like that either. Okay. It's, it's temperamental. It's it's it's, it's an it's, early two thousand Chrysler yeah, product. You gotta you gotta <laughs> you gotta convince it that it does want to go fast. All right, are you ready? I, I'm ready. I want to see if this thing's got that oomph you've been selling me on. Okay, build into the throttle. Higher RPMs. Three thousand. Now full throttle. Oh. <laughs> so once you get it into the higher RPMs. Yeah. It does really scoot before the engine completely cuts out. <laughs> so, um, y yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not, not so sure that I'm liking this as much as I had convinced myself I would when we started the video. <laughs> it's Britney, bitch. Oh. <laughs> so, Brendan, at auction, I think that the Mighty PT is going to sell for $2,800. $2,800 for a non-working PT Cruiser? It, it just doesn't work at full throttle. It works oh, at every gosh. other throttle. I don't know, Tommy. I think you're you're a bit lofty on it. I mean, it is the convertible. I'll give it that. It does have the turbo motor. But in its current state, I don't think this could go for more than $1,500. bucks. let us see what happens. All right, Brendan, there goes the PT Cruiser, and what did it sell for? Sold for a thousand bucks. And uh, I think everybody was just seeing that without an engine that's working right, they're just not worth much. But it was a turbo and a convertible, but at the end of the day, it ran at 80% throttle, just not at full. <laughs> and that was enough to get people. 80% means you could have a 0% engine in that thing. Yeah. All right, so you definitely won that one. Yep, I win that one. Next up, we have one of my all-time favorite luxury SUVs. This is the epitome of early 2000s luxury. Brendan, what are we looking at? This is a 2003 Cadillac Escalade, and not just any Escalade, it's ESV. So it's basically the Suburban of the Escalades. It's the extended wheelbase limo version of the Escalade, if you will. But these things are actually fantastic vehicles, super, super, super reliable. And we actually owned an 03 for a while. It is, to this day, the most comfortable SUV I have ever driven. So let's talk about it. Yeah, I can totally get behind you on there. I actually have a 2003 Yukon XL, which is the same thing, except this is way more luxurious than the Yukons. Exactly right. You want to pop the hood, Brendan? Yeah. So these Escalades are based on trucks, as Brendan said, and as such, they have not only a truck power plant, but truck reliability. So what we're looking at here is a Vortex 6000. This is a six liter V8 with 345 horsepower. When this vehicle launched, by the way, in 2002, it was the most powerful SUV in the world, as Jeremy Clarkson would say. But these six liter engines are darn near indestructible. They're great towing units. They are super easy to get parts for, super easy to work on, just phenomenal little units. And, and that's part of what makes this thing so fantastic. Yeah, and then not only that, but the interior in this is about as comfortable as it gets. Now, finding one of these in nice shape has become quite difficult these days. Um, however, this one is super nice. And it starts with these little armrests. Just like a Range Rover, you get separate armrests for the front seats and you get lots of leather, lots of wood, and just a really, really comfortable seat. Lots of wood from the 
finest fake forests, if you will, Brendan. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now, yeah, these seats are practically lazy boys, and they are just the greatest seats for road trips. Uh, a couple other things that are cool in here. First of all, take a look at down here. We've got the Bulgari clock. <laughs> we have a six-disc CD changer, dual-zone automatic climate control. This one, someone messed with the radio. It's got an aftermarket radio. But I just like, I love how 1930s and kind of art deco the gauges are in these, right, with these fantastic little bezels on them. And you got the wood on the steering wheel, heated seats, memory seats back in 2003 and um, even in the back you got heated seats in the back you got little controls for if you want for example to listen to separate tunes as a kid in the back and being an ESV you have about 9,000 feet of space behind the second row for uh, friends families activities furry furry buddies anything you want back there yeah, I, a lot of people get these and you can use them as a family hauler. You can even just use this as a truck. You can use this as a toy hauler. They are super, super versatile along with all the comfort and the luxury. Oh, Brendan, we have made the right decision by picking this to be on our list. <laughs> Absolutely. After a long day of walking around, there's a really no better place to sit than in one of these. So these are, I'm dead serious when I say there are very few vehicles I'd rather drive more on a 3,000 mile trip across country than an early 2000s Escalade because nothing rides better. You've got these incredibly soft springs that just soak up every little ant and imperfection and problem in the road. You got buttery smooth power steering and you've got a surprisingly potent six liter underneath the hood. Yeah, and I mean, not only that, but people gave GM a, a really hard time with their interior plastics in the early 2000s. But if you look at it now, look how well this has held up over like 20 years, right? This is a 20 year old vehicle. There's not a crack in the dash and no nicks or anything going on in this. It just, it's held up super well. All right, so we're on the test track here. Now we do have a full-time four-wheel drive system, so you don't have to shift either into two high, four high in this thing. It's always in uh, all-wheel drive mode. Are you ready? Let's do it. Hitting the gas. Listen to that V8 sing. All right. Not bad. Honestly, though, it's got quite a bit of kick, and if you have a boat or a trailer you need to tow, this is easily near the top of my list for a full-size SUV because of the amount of space it gives you for your friends and family and for the amount of comfort and capability they provide. This thing is awesome, but what do we think it's gonna sell for? All right, Brendan, so simple question. Would you buy the Escalade or is it a bust? Oh, this is a buy all day, Tommy. I mean, I own the GMC Yukon version of this but after riding in it, I can kind of see how this is a little bit of a softer, more plush experience than the GMC was. I am all on board with these early 2000s um, Escalades. Every rapper in the early 2000s had one. Every pop mogul had to have an Escalade, and they're right. Turns out they were right. They were, and I just have to ask, why did we go away from such comfortable, cushy seats as these? Now, what do you think this is gonna sell for at the auction? So, this is a tough one because it says 114,000 miles, which on these is super low. These can go three, 400,000 miles easily. But I think in the condition that it's sitting in at an auction, this could fetch like $7,000. I'm gonna be way more optimistic. We do have some damage right here on the front right, a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of parking lot rash, but with 114K, I'm gonna guess that this is gonna go for nine and a half thousand dollars at auction. Ooh, I guess we'll see who's right. This thing opened at $2,000 and everybody is jumping in on the action. It quickly jumped up to $6,000, $7,000, $8,000. It's up to $9,000 right now. Everybody wants this caddy. All right, Brandon, they just rolled the Escalade. What did it sell for? The Escalade got so much action. They started bidding off at $2,000, and it quickly jumped from there, selling for $9,000. Now, you guessed seven. I guessed seven, yep. I guessed 9,500, so I won that one. You did. You won that one. Congrats. So, Brendan, what have you brought us here? So, this here is a 2014 Lexus CT200H. <laughs> and I think, I mean, that's 
got to be one of the worst names that Lexus ever thought of, right? <laughs> but if you think about it this way, it's basically a Prius in a tuxedo because it's a Lexus. Yeah, these cars are really cool. Now, they're based on the MC platform, so not quite the same as the conventional Prius, but the powertrain is very similar. And these are front-wheel drive hatchbacks, but premium hatchbacks that weren't that expensive back in the day. Yeah, if you think about it, the, if you top-spec'd out a Toyota Prius back in the day, you were maxing out at about $31,000. Now, to get into one of these, it was only $1,000 more, $32,000, and you got a way cooler looking design, a way nicer interior, and something that just you're not embarrassed to be seen in, really. And check out that inside. You want to hop in on the driver's side? Sure. These things are really funky. They've got kind of this dual-level dashboard where you've got the climate control up top, and then you got the radio down below. This is more of an entry level, so we don't have the big screen or anything. We've got conventional radio with buttons and knobs, which actually in 2022 is quite nice. And look at that steering wheel, Brendan. That thing's nice. Yeah, this feels really nice, honestly. This feels like a very good sporty steering wheel. Like, I could go do a track attack in this thing. And the other feeling that I get in this too is it, unlike the Prius where it feels kind of open and airy, this has much more of like a cockpit style feel. It feels like I'm in something sporty. It really honestly feels like I'm in something special. Yeah, these are really great little cars. Um, I, I think we're already in agreement, but let's go take it for a spin and see how she drives. Sounds good. All right, Brendan, let's go ahead and fire up the CT200H. Wait, did I fire it up? I think you did. Everything turned on, but... The engine's not running. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, that is one thing that's weird about these hybrids is when you turn it on, there's no satisfying, like, come to life of the engine. It's just kind of like on. Yep, that's right. <laughs> well, let's see how she drives. Now, this car was pretty, um, pretty big deal for Lexus because up until this point, Lexus have been known for making very high quality vehicles, but quite expensive vehicles and vehicles that appeal to an older demographic. This was a small, affordable hatchback relative to the rest of the lineup built to kind of appeal to people in cities and a younger demographic. And I think they had these priced right too. Like I said, these were only a thousand dollars more than the top tier Prius. So it really was kind of like you can spec up the Prius and then when you're, you can afford something a little bit more, you jump right up into the Lexus. And I'm kind of surprised they sold a ton of those Priuses, but you really don't see many of these. I wonder if they just, people didn't know they existed. Very well could be Brendan. That's a great point you made. Um, now let's go ahead and head on to the little test track. We'll see how the acceleration is. Don't go expecting much. Let's test the brakes first. Let's see. It's got brakes. Yeah, it's got brakes. All right, you ready for the power? Give her the beans. Yeah. Yeah, it's... It goes. It, it goes. It's not dangerously slow, for no, sure. but it's, it's like, like a little bit quicker than a Prius. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty accurate. Yeah. Not too bad. It does seem to handle very well. The, uh, the Prius doesn't feel like anything sporty whatsoever, but with this nice steering wheel, and it, it does feel pretty tight as well, I would say. It's a good little car, right? Yeah. So, Brendan, is the CT200H, is it not a buy or a bust? I think it's a buy. I, if you're out looking for something that's going to be fuel efficient, going to look good going down the road and be nice and comfortable and reliable, it's kind of hard to beat. I agree. I think these are fantastic cars. I like them a lot. Really excited about this one. And when it comes to money, um, I'm going to give this an auction sales price of $9,800. Uh, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but this has got a little bit of hail damage going on. So I think it might go a little bit lower than you expect. I'm gonna guess 8,000. And it's got 132,000 miles. So kind of high, kind of yeah. fairly high. Let's see what it actually goes for. All right, Brendan, here goes Alexis. About to go across the block. Yeah, I think this was, uh probably our highest valued vehicle that we had here but it is also the newest but uh we'll see how it does all right brendan so the lexus just went across what did it sell for it sold for fifty six hundred dollars and uh i think my guess was eight grand yours was ninety eight hundred so we were both really high on that thing but i think again i think the weather is affecting the prices today so if you wanted a good deal today's the day to get it but and you were closer but i was closer so i won that one. Oh. Brendan, well, that was a ton of fun, but you beat me on this episode. Yeah, it was close. It was two to one, right? I mean, you still got that Cadillac correct, but uh, I guess I'll take the other two, and I'll take the win. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, has been Tommy. And Brendan. We'll see you in the next episode.